president-elect has not complained about what might be a flat-out insult from the outgoing administration of President Bush. More on that with the reporter who broke this story and the sorry tale connected to it, Margaret Carlson, presently. Two weeks from today, in our number one story, an inauguration guaranteed to be momentous with the imprint of history and tailored to set a new tone from a new president. Preceded by a train procession, a public concert at the Lincoln Memorial, and a day of community service. Then the inauguration, and that night, the inaugural balls. The presidential inaugural committee today formally announcing a first ever youth ball with reduced ticket prices, a neighborhood ball which will welcome DC residents, and the military ball which will be broadcast for the first time worldwide. A total of 10 festivals, most non security costs of the inauguration funded privately. The inaugural committee having raised more than $24 million towards a goal of 40 to 45 million. Meantime, House Speaker Pelosi has confessed that her own grandchildren are going to be skipping her swearing in in favor of Obama's. But the spit in the punch bowl, the Bush administration's claim that Blair House was unavailable to the Obamas until January 15th due to uh, prior bookings. Let's turn now to Bloomberg News political columnist and the Washington editor of The Week magazine, Margaret Carlson. Good evening, Margaret. Good evening, Keith. So the Obamas are in um, a hotel for now, uh, admittedly a lovely hotel, for another nine days because the Bush administration says uh, Blair House is unavailable. But uh, as I've been hinting, you have information that suggests that's not entirely correct. Well, I reported, but also the Washington Post reported on December 11th and 12th, that there were no foreign dignitaries booked into Blair House during that period of time. Uh, it turns out that a former Prime Minister of Australia is going to be staying there overnight soon. However, not only is he a former, but I have the feeling they asked him to come and stay so that there might be some plausible reason for not letting the Obamas stay there. You know, Blair House is looks small, but it's actually 119 rooms mm -hmm. with 35 bathrooms. Uh, Howard wouldn't even have to share a sink with the Obamas. Uh, there's a dry cleaning, a florist, a beauty salon. There's everything there. It's a little town. But most of, importantly, it's secure. By staying, having to stay at the Hay Adams, not only do the Obamas have to move twice, which no one likes to do, uh, but the security cost to taxpayers is enormous because the, the area a block away from the White House is totally cordoned off with Jersey barriers and police uh, cars and, and buses to keep it blocked off. And downtown is already completely jammed because so much of it is cordoned off. Um, it it was, would have been a small thing for the Bushes to say yes. They still have control over Blair House, and they decided to say no. Um, as one caveat here, given how unpopular John Howard is at Aust in Australia mm -hmm. at the moment, it's possible that he's coming here to seek political asylum, so he might need the whole place. <laughs> right. And that no hotel would take exactly. him. Exactly. But, but uh, the, uh, what startles me, as what has startled me with so much of this administration, how could the, how could the Bush administration possibly think all this wouldn't get out? Well, it doesn't matter that much anymore when we're being left with our retirement funds, you know, losing 50 percent of their value and we're mired in two wars, one of which was unnecessary. Saying there's no room at the end to the Obamas, uh, you know, is, is just a feather um, next to all of that. The, uh, to turn to the brighter uh, uh, su subject here, the, the inaugural uh, ball, and the, you know, the ten of them here, a common modern facet of the day's events. But is there a risk, given what you just described here, that it's a poor match with the present circumstances in the country? Well, given the, the circumstances, um, the inaugural committee is trying to tamp down uh, some of the excesses of balls past so that there's... Um, you know, I think the, the, the best ball they're doing is the Commander-in-Chief's ball, which is open for free. Most of the uh, balls cost money to go to, um, to all enlisted military and any wounded veterans who can, who can make it. Um, and Obama will be going to that one, of course. Um, and that will be shown, you know, in, in bases all around the place that will be beamed out of, uh, out of Washington. Then there's the neighborhood ball, which is at the D.C. Convention Center. And that I think of as like meetup.org where you're supposed to be having uh, balls on your own street corners and church basements and high schools. Uh, at the same time, the neighborhood ball is going on in the convention and they're going to try to beam that into different places. Um, and then young people get a cut rate uh, ball 
instead of the usual $150, they're $75. And they haven't released who's going to perform. But one of the problems with these balls, um, Keith, is uh, I went to the two Clinton balls as a reporter, is that it's like a birthday party where the guest of honor doesn't show up or he shows up for a second. So you're just standing around. But the entertainment is supposed to be very, very good so that the absence of Obama Obama for more than a few minutes uh, won't be so noticeable. Plus, if you're having one of those neighborhood balls, apparently John Howard is available as your special <laughs> guest if you need him. Right. Mar uh, Margaret Carlson. Fresh of, from Blair House. Indeed. Of Bloomberg News and The Week magazine. Thank you for that, and, and thank Thanks, you for Keith. this as always.